I've had multiple conversations with many functional medicine doctors about, you know, is testosterone supposed to deplete as you go through menopause? You know, what, what's the difference between the aging testosterone of a man and an aging testosterone of a woman? And I think the, more importantly, we tend to attach testosterone as this, this hormone that affects libido, but it does so much more. And I can tell you as a postmenopausal woman, like, woo, when I started to lose it, it was a lot more than libido. And I want to talk about why that is and what, yeah. that, what are the other symptoms. So in, let's start off, enlighten us about testosterone. Yeah. I mean, testosterone is, it's fabulous. It's obviously, we all have testosterone. Women have about a 10th as much as men in general. So it's it, but interestingly enough, women have more testosterone in their bodies than they do estrogen. So even though we think of it as being a, you know, a male hormone, it's, it's an everyone hormone and it is made by the, you know, the ovaries and women, women and testes in men, as well as the adrenal glands and some peripheral tissues. So you have testosterone that's kind of just like marching downward as you get older, men and women. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of the slow, you know, march starts, especially around 35 or 40 for men and women. Um, and there are some circumstances where levels can go down more abruptly. Menopause is one of them. So you do have a little bit of a dip because you lose ovarian function, although you still have adrenal function of testosterone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, just like you said, it's, I mean, it's libido. Yes. It's interest in sex for sure, but it's also sexual function. So it's also arousal, you know, getting erections, men and women, but it's also motivation, like getting off the yeah. couch, go to the gym. Like it's, it's building muscle, which as you, we, we know for women, especially is, is more important as we get older, it's getting rid of, of fat, like burning visceral mm. fat and like, you know, getting rid of your, the, the tube around your belly. And it's also brain health. There's, there's so many things to testosterone beyond just libido. And I think that especially as women, we don't hear about it a lot for us because yeah. there are no FDA approved testosterones for women still. Uh, and so wow. that's something else to talk about. Yes. <laughs> so on that note, I'll tell you my own personal experience going through my perimenopausal years. So my background was as a competitive athlete. I played a, 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 at the University of Kansas on a college uh, tennis scholarship. And I I've just been athletic my whole life. I have literally craved exercise the majority of my life. Somewhere in my late 40s, that craving completely went away. Wow. And I, I was having to like force myself to go out and work out. And one day I was sitting in a, you know, a conference on testosterone, all hormones, but they were talking specifically about testosterone and how it relates to DHEA. And that talked about how when DHEA makes cortisol, progesterone, and testosterone. So when your stress is high, you lose that DHEA, you lose your testosterone. So yeah. I, you know, I know you know all this. I'm just, I just bringing to a, the the conversation. What shocked me was it wasn't just the process of perimenopause that was causing my testosterone to tank, but it was actually my stressed out life and the combination yeah. of those two. Would yeah. you agree? And can you give me more context for that? Because that shocked me. It's, that's completely true. And it, it goes even beyond that. So imagine you're in perimenopause or menopause. You're not sleeping well for various reasons. Progesterone is low. You're having hot flashes, et cetera. And of course, men as well, if you're not sleeping well, a lot of testosterone is made at night. It's like growth hormone. So it's made mm -hmm. at night. So if you're not sleeping well, then you're not making testosterone. So then that is making you even like more stressed out. So it's like this vicious loop. So you know, between the high cortisol of stress, between the not sleeping well and not making testosterone that way, and the fact that you're also going through all these changes where your body is just not making as much testosterone, it's like all these things come together in the perfect storm that lead to, you know, lack of motivation, like you said. And I also see a lot of just kind of mood being, when I ask people there, they describe their mood as being like, blah, like, I'm like, how are you feeling? And when they have low testosterone, men and women, they describe their mood as just being like, eh. Like, eh, like I'm not necessarily super depressed, but I'm also not feeling very good. Like I'm just kind of in a space where I don't really enjoy that much. I don't feel that much. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that I see as well as kind of an early indicator that maybe testosterone is, is a problem. What is it supposed to do through menopause? Is it supposed to decline? I mean, <laughs> if supposed to, I mean, yes. I mean, I, it, we are designed to lose all a lot of good hormones at menopause, whether that design sucks. was a good one or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah it sucks. I, I'd like to go back to the maker and have a, a conversation. 
<laughs> I, yeah, I think, you know, I think we weren't designed to live beyond, you know, 50 or 55 or so. And so now that we are, we're spending half of our lives in this post, you know, this menopausal state. Obviously, we we wish we had those hormones back. And yeah. I think we both agree on that. But yeah, it, 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 just, it's, it goes down. It's supposed to go down with age. And that's what happens with men and women. But I think that we both agree that there's there's not a lot of good that comes from testosterone going down with age. Like, I can't think of anything good that comes from it. No, I can't think of anything good either. <laughs> so, so is there any way we can slow the, the, that decline down? Like if, you know, I always think my big plea in life is to turn around and tell all the 30 year olds and, and, and people going into their forties, like, oh, you got to know what's coming because, it, and, but I say it with, with love, because I feel like if we knew what was coming, we could change our lifestyle to yeah. soften the ride. So is there anything we can do to make sure that testosterone doesn't tank? Yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the research is more in men than women. And so in men, and I think it, pro it probably, a lot of it probably holds true for women as well, but we just don't have as much, but you know, lifting heavy weights, for instance, we know if you lift heavy weights and using a lot of those big muscle groups and keep it, what that will help boost testosterone, limiting, you know, a lot of sugar and kind of get, getting rid of belly fat, visceral fat that will help as well. There are some vitamins like vitamin D3. So, you know, get out, get, get a little sun if you can like, um, mm. cover your face, but get some body sun that can help testosterone, again, sleeping, reducing stress, you know, all the things that we know are healthy for us in general can help you be able to make testosterone. But even with the best of intentions and the best lifestyle, there does come a point, usually, usually for both men and women, but I think especially in women where your levels just kind of keep marching down and you may need some help. Uh, so are there foods we can eat to stimulate testosterone? I don't know if I've seen anything, and maybe you have. I haven't seen any like studies on specific foods. I mean, there are some nutrients like selenium and zinc and vitamin D and some of these things that you know, if you're if you're deficient in those and you take them, then they may help. But you know, most people aren't deficient. Usually, uh, you know, for for the basic building blocks of testosterone. But yeah, I mean, you can try some some of those. You can eat some Brazil nuts and see what happens. <laughs> right. Well, it's it's funny because Dr. Carrie Jones and I have had this conversation multiple times. And I always come back to her and I think like, there has to be a food like strategy for testosterone. Because what I can find is there's a strategy for estrogen and progesterone. Why would there not be a food strategy for t testosterone? Other than the fact that you want to keep your microbiome healthy so you can break down all of these hormones. Yeah. Um, and she claims no. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what, what's the oyster? What about the oyster? And she's like, well, the only reason is because it's high in, you know, in zinc. So people think of it as an aphrodisiac. Do we know yeah. any other thing I mean, about the, the oyster? Thing I would think I can only, I, I mean, I think making sure you're getting enough protein so you can build the muscle, you know, to, to, cause that is part of being able to, to, to make testosterone is if you have a lot of muscle and you're working out, that can be helpful. But I don't know of any other like foods that are going to really be super helpful, unfortunately. Right. Okay. And then I'm going to ask at you, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but it's one that I've been just curious about is the effects of fasting on testosterone in women. There's interesting new science, conflicting science about fasting in men for testosterone, which is you know conflicting of what we learned years ago. We know that fasting can help growth hormone, and we know that when where growth hormone spikes, other hormones tend to follow. But I'm curious if you have an opinion on fasting for testosterone. You know, I yeah, I haven't seen anything about fasting and testosterone in women myself. I do think that fasting is beneficial in a lot of cases, but I also think, especially as we get older and especially as we lose muscle mass, we have to just be a little careful with, with that, you know, depending on the person. That's why we cycle it. That's why we, yeah. <laughs>